Hi, and welcome to the 30-Day Challenge. I'm Tim, and this is my dog, Ollie. And we're gonna begin today's class, bringing our awareness to the breath, then we'll build some heat through the practice and finish with some deep stretches. So first, find a comfortable seat, whether that's sitting cross-legged, kneeling, or you could even lie down on your back if sitting cross-legged isn't comfortable. And as you close your eyes, draw your awareness inward. And let's take three conscious breaths in and out through the nose. And as you breathe in, just notice the sensation in your body, the expansion, the opening. And as you breathe out, notice the cooling, grounding, and calming sensation. Allow your body to relax so that the breath can expand. And see where you can let go of tension as you exhale. One more smooth and slower breath. Then open your eyes and let's start to move with our breath. So come onto your hands and your knees. And the first movement we're gonna do is cat-cow. So as you exhale, round through your back, stretch and open up. And as you inhale, flip into extension. Let your spine start to drop in and down, the sit bones flip up, your heart roll forward. As you exhale, round through your back, spread through your shoulder blades, press into the floor. As you inhale, flip the other way. And see if as you slow down your breath, can it help to increase the range of motion as you slow down and lengthen? One more round, exhaling. Oh yeah, I get a little bit more movement if I really focus on exhaling all the air out. And inhale. And come to neutral. So we focused on the breath, which is one of the foundational elements. The next is banda. So we can think of banda just real basically as helping to create stability in the body. And we'll go more depth in depth into it throughout the 30 day challenge. But that along with our dristi, our yoga gaze, these are the foundational elements that I wanna keep bringing your awareness to. So as you hold here, don't let your spine sink and don't sink into your body, but also don't push so much that you start to harden. Be right in the middle, look for balance. So your rib cage is in, you're holding that position and then bring your left knee up toward your armpit and then step your foot up to the outside of your hand. Now reach your left elbow down towards the ground. And then as you inhale, twist, reach up. But you're still being mindful to keep the connection between your rib cage and your pelvis. You're not spilling out, but you're not overdoing and tucking and hardening. As you exhale, bring your elbow down towards the ground. And as you inhale, reach up. Exhale, elbow down to the ground. Inhale, reach up. Now curl your back toes under, lift your back knee up as you keep reaching and open up big. Bring your hand down onto the ground. Now from here, drop your back knee, stretch your hips back. One more little warm up, loosening up the hips and hamstrings. Inhale, glide forward, let your hips melt forward towards your wrists. And as you exhale, stretch your hips back, reach. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, stretch back. Inhale, come forward. Lift the back knee up again. Now we're gonna step into a plank position. If plank's too difficult, you can drop your knees down. But once again, instead of sinking, Press the floor away, lift up your ribs, but don't overdo. Just enough energy to seal things up. Now drop your left knee down, keeping your core connection. Step your right foot up to the outside of your right hand, just being mindful of your curly dog. And then reach your right elbow down towards the ground. As you inhale, lift up and twist, lift your belly, up towards your hand, 
Exhale, reach your right elbow down. Inhale, reach up and twist. Exhale, reach elbow down. It feels so good just to move with your breath, huh? Inhale, reach up and twist. Now, curl your back toes, lift your back knee. And see if as you lift your back thigh bone, you can drop your hips a little bit deeper. Bring your right hand down onto the inside of your foot. Now drop your back knee down. And as you exhale, stretch your hips back. Inhale, come forward, hips towards your wrists. Lift your heart. Exhale, stretch, hips back. Inhale, hips come forward, lift your heart. Exhale, hips stretch back, last one. Inhale, come forward. Curl your back toes, lift your back knee up. And step into a plank position. As you hold in your plank position, push the floor away. Engage your legs, engage your glutes. And as you continue to press the floor away, feel the heat building in your body. Good, now set your knees down, stretch your hips back, child's pose. So if any time in the practice you need to take a break, something feels too intense, you're welcome just to drop here and reconnect to your breath. Come back up onto your hands and your knees. Now curl your toes, lift your knees and your hips up. Stretch back into your first down dog. Let's do with knees bent. And as you press into the floor, lift your waist up and away from the ground. And then walk your hands back to your feet, one handprint at a time, working on your upper body strength and stability, a little core challenge, and fold forward to the back of your mat. Grab your elbows, let your head drop. Change the clasp of your elbows. Release your hands and roll yourself up to stand. Now spread your arms, reach up. And then spread your arms and fold forward. Inhale, slide your hands up your shins. Come up halfway and try to lengthen your spine like a flat back. As you exhale, slide the hands down. Now walk yourself back out into a down dog. Nice. Shift into plank pose. Now, if you're starting to feel like so far the practice is too easy, the challenge will get increasingly more difficult throughout the weeks. If you're already feeling like, dang, this is a little too hard, I'm gonna put a link to a beginner challenge that you can try. Although this challenge is meant for all levels, but there is a beginner course you can do as well and then come back to this one. All right, now set your knees down or keep your legs straight if you want to increase the upper body challenge, we're going to slowly lower to elbow height and pause there. Then press back up. Again, slowly lower, but this time one inch above the mat. And you can do this with your legs straight if you have the upper body strength. Then lift back up. Then slowly lower all the way onto your belly. Good, reach your arms forward as you stretch back to your toes. So a big stretch here on the floor, reach back to your toes, reach forward through your fingers. And now let's wake up our back muscles. So start to engage your buttocks, firm your buttocks towards your heels, squeeze your legs, and now as you exhale, pull the elbows back. 
lift your heart and feel your back muscles engage. Inhale, stretch forward. Try to keep a little lift if you can hover. Exhale, pull back. Feel your upper back muscles wake up, squeeze. Inhale, reach forward, last one. Exhale, squeeze, pull back, hold. Now slide your hands right next to your chest. As you inhale, roll yourself up one more inch. Lengthen through your tailbone. Lower your heart back down to the mat. Now press up, plank position. And stretch back into down dog. Look in between your hands, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, come up halfway again. Exhale, slide and fold deeper. Press into your feet, inhale, come up. Spread your arms, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Now step your left leg back into a lunge. Lower your knee down. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, pull the elbows back and do that little back bend in your upper back, but try to lift from the back of your heart. Inhale, raise your arms back up. Bring your hands down to the mat. Curl your back toes, lift your back knee, and step back, plank position. Knees down or legs straight, your call. Lower slowly to elbow height. Keep your core engaged so you're not dipping in your middle. Press back up. Lower one inch above the mat. Press back up. Lower all the way down. Once your heart touches, lift your hands up an inch. Feel your back muscles engage. Then place the hands back down as you inhale. Come up into baby cobra. Exhale, lower your heart back down. Inhale, roll up into baby cobra. Maybe one inch higher this time. Exhale, lower down. Last one, inhale. Adolescent cobra, a little bit higher. And lower back down. Press up into plank pose. Hands and knees is fine. Whichever one you do, make sure you stay connected in your core. You keep your bandha. Then press back, downward facing dog. Now from down dog, raise your left leg up behind you, inhale. Push down through the floor. Exhale, step your foot all the way up. If it's difficult, join the club. <laughs> inhale, come up on your fingertips. The flexibility will get better though as we practice together. And as you exhale, step forward. Press into your feet and inhale. Come up, reverse swan dive. Reach the arms. And as you exhale, spread arms, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. And exhale, step your right leg back. Drop your knee down. Ground your left heel. Feel your outer left hip engage as you inhale to come up. That will help with your bond or your stability. As you exhale, pull your elbows down and lift through the back of your heart. Inhale, your arms back up. Bring your hands to the mat. Curl your back toes. Step back. Plank position. Lower down slowly. Drop to elbow height. You can do with the legs straight or knees down. Lift back up. Lower one inch above the mat. Lower all the way down. Inhale into cobra. Lower back down, lift your hands up an inch. Place the hands back down, inhale, come up a little bit higher into your cobra now maybe. Feel the heat building, your spine becoming more mobile. Lower your heart back down, press up into plank pose. Stretch back into downward dog. 
Inhale, raise your right leg up. Exhale, step your foot all the way up by your thumb. Inhale, come up on your fingertips, stretch in your lunge. Exhale, step your back leg forward and fold. Press into your feet and inhale. Reverse swan dive, come all the way up. Exhale, Samastiti. So as we stand in Samastiti, you might be asking yourself, what does Samastiti mean? That's a word I never heard before. Well, Samastiti is standing in a state of balance. So you're looking for balance between front and back, left and right, effort and relaxation. So look for that here. See if you can find your breath again. Do you feel like you've warmed up? Do you feel energized maybe? You can move your body a little more freely now if you're doing the warm up. All right, now we're gonna introduce the Dristi. So that's our yoga gaze. And our yoga gaze can help us to find a meditative quality in the practice. So I want you to look straight ahead, fix your gaze at a point that's not moving. Then shift the weight over into your left foot and bring your right heel up onto your left inner leg. So if it doesn't go up very high, that's okay. Try to find a spot right above or below the knee. And if it's difficult to get the foot to stick there, then you can go against the wall, put your hand against the wall and hold it with your other, or you could get something sticky. I don't know, you some, stick some gum in there. I'm not sure what, the, okay. Now, as you balance here on your left foot, focus your gaze and pay attention to your breath. Once you feel steady, raise your arms up. We'll try not to make any more silly comments so you can just stay focused. And bring your arms back down and lower your leg. How'd it go? All right, change sides. Balance in your right foot as you bring your left leg up, heel up, and again, it might just be right here. That's great. If you can just hold the leg there, focus on your balance, cool. If you have flexibility to bring your leg up higher, just remember, it's not a competition. There's gonna be no medals awarded at the end of class, so you don't have to try to jam yourself. Raise your arms up once you're steady. Again, we want to be looking for that sense of balance and equanimity. Don't want to be jamming yourself into these poses. It's not a jam session, but maybe later you could come over with your base and we'll have a jam session. But for now, let's just focus on finding the ease in the breath. Bring your arms back down and lower your leg down. Take your legs wide apart and spread your arms out to the side. From here, angle your left leg in slightly and turn your right leg all the way out and turn it so that the center of your foot, your second, your third toe points towards the front of the mat, as well as your center knee and even the center of your femur, the top of your thigh bone. To make that happen, your hips turn a little bit to the right. That's okay, let that happen. Now spread your arms, keep the rotation in that leg as you bend the knee towards 90 degrees. So we're going over some of these more beginner elements in the challenge through week one. So if it feels like a lot of review to you, that's okay, it's good to come back to these concepts sometimes. Find your breath. Now look just over your right finger if you can do it without straining your neck. If it tenses your neck, you can just go soft eyes straight ahead. And then as you look over the finger, let the gaze soften. And even though the gaze is fixed over the finger, see if you can take in the whole 180 degrees so it's a more peripheral vision. That's a little more advanced. So if that freaks you out, 
Just focus on looking over the finger. Then from here, tip over your pelvis and either set your forearm onto your thigh as you reach your arm over or set your fingertips down if you're more flexible. But you don't want to just hang into it like I described earlier. And you don't want to overdo. Just find the place where it feels. I guess you get overdo from here too. Find the place where it feels like you're open and you can breathe, but you have good stability at the same time. Then press down to your feet and as you inhale, come back to warrior two. Straighten your leg and turn your legs to the other side. Bend the left knee. You have all those turn of the thigh, the turn of the foot. Okay, got all that stuff. Check, check, check. Got my breath, got my drifty. Shoulders are relaxed, not crunching. Now lean out over your leg, bring your forearm to your thigh, or set your fingertips down onto the outside of your foot on the floor. Now in this pose, it's called side angle pose, try to make a line from your back ankle, through your side body, through your fingers. Press down through your feet, and as you inhale, come back into warrior two. Straighten your leg and turn your toes in so your feet are parallel. Turn your right leg out and step forward to the front of your mat. Adjust the clothing to get back. Okay, back to Samastiti, hands in prayer position. And inhale your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, up halfway. Now drop into a squat position over your buttocks to the floor. And let's just do a little abdominals. So balance it between your sit bone and tailbone. Bring your knees up. And take your arms forward. And see if you can lift your feet up without leaning back. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good. Then set your heels down onto the ground. Make it a little more interesting. Roll your lower back down. As you hold the lower back down onto the ground, see if you can take your left leg forward, keeping the lower back down. Reach your right arm back. If it feels too challenging, just keep the arm forward. You want to keep the ribs down, the front hip bones pulled in. Then change. Good, now both arms forward, both knees in, crunch up another inch. And then set your feet down, open your arms out to the side. Now let's go for our deep stretch here to finish things off. 
We already did one standing one. We'll do a supine one too. Cross your right ankle over your knee and slowly let your legs fall over to the left. So this one is nice because it gives you an outer hip stretch as well as a twist. And notice how I try to keep the right knee upright to find the extra rotation in my hip and that's what creates the hip stretch in this pose. Then come back to center and change the cross of your legs. And slowly let your legs fall over. Watch out for your sleeping dog. Sorry, Ollie. I'll scoot over a little, don't worry. Just chill. He's chilling. One more deep breath in through your nose. And as you exhale, can you relax even deeper? Isn't that cool? Because our breath is kind of like our, our way to um, hack into the autonomic nervous system. So we can start to create deeper relaxation just by influencing with our breath. Come back to center. Hug your knees to your armpits. And if you're more flexible, you could grab a hold of the outsides of your feet. And this is called perineum sunning pose. No, I'm just kidding. It's called the happy baby. Although the prior is trending right now among the influencers. Let's do a little Shavasana now. So release your legs, turn your palms up at your side, let your feet fall open and just let your body relax. So this is the most important part of our practice, our final meditation and integration is where we really get to soak in the benefits of the practice. So all the moving and deep breathing and clearing the energy channels and moving, just the movement allows us, the movement in different planes that we don't often take our body through. Mind and the body is connected, so you might feel much more calm and clear after you've moved in the way that we moved just now. So just notice that. Let yourself be empty, let go. And as the thoughts come in and out, you don't have to try to stop the thoughts or just let them come, let them go, but just keep being identified with the space in between the thoughts. We, got, we get all caught up in identifying with the thoughts, thinking that we are the thoughts. But thoughts come and go, and we're the consciousness that observes them. Take a deep breath into your nose and let it out. Then roll over to your side, refreshed, 
renewed, rejuvenated, all those good things that you feel at the end of your practice. And bring your palms together. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for day one. If you're feeling like this is something that you're ready to commit to, I just need you to do a few things. First, take a moment to sign up for the challenge if you haven't already. Click the link below in the first comment or in the description where it has a link to sign up. Second, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. And third, hit the like button and comment below. I'm with you on the challenge. And it would be a great help for me if you would click the like button after you watch all the videos. It'll just make it so that YouTube recommends it to more people. So if you think this challenge is helpful, you wanna share it, that's a great way to make sure it gets around. And very last, the challenge is best done if you have people with you to encourage you. So I highly suggest that you invite a friend, a family member, a coworker to help to keep you motivated and accountable. So you can click the share button, it's a little curved arrow, and that will copy the link so you can send it to anybody that you can think of that would help to keep you stoked on this challenge. I'm so glad you're taking the challenge with me and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.